right, welcome back to the Cisco TV studio. Live broadcast coming to you from Barcelona, here halfway between the hub and the world of solutions. Welcome to everybody who is tuning in to us over the internet as well. We're so glad to have you with us here virtually in Spain, and remember to continue to talk to us via social media using hashtag Cisco Live Europe, C-L-E-U-R, Clure. I promise if you talk to us, we will talk back to you. We're so glad to have you here with us. Just finished a terrific segment talking about digital, digital transformation. We're going to make a shift right now and start beginning a, a discussion on cloud. We've got a lot that we're going to cover over the next half hour as far as cloud goes. Before we start to dive into the content of cloud, I want to talk about these innovation showcases. The first showcase that is coming up at about 20 minutes past 12, which according to my clock is less than 30 minutes from now, we're going to talk about enabling a multi-cloud world. We've got Liz Santoni and Kip Compton with us. Um, having the light the right cloud strategy, this is such a crucial thing. We used to talk about fear of getting to the cloud. What type of cloud? Do I put all of my information in one cloud or do I divide? Is it a public cloud, a private cloud? We are now in a multi-cloud environment. Most organizations find that that approach, using the multi-cloud approach, that's what gives them that flexibility that they really need, not just to thrive, but also take advantage of every opportunity available to them to innovate. So once again, that Cloud Content Innovation Showcase, that will begin at 20 minutes past 12. That's in the CMAX Theater, which is down at the far end of the world of solutions. We encourage all of you to join us. If you are live here on the show floor and you're seeing this broadcast in real time, make your way on down to the end of the world of solutions. For those of you tuning in from all around the world, we're going to bring that content to you live when it kicks off just about 25 minutes from now. Other great innovation showcases coming up throughout the day as well. If you're not sure what to uh, check out, make sure that you have downloaded the Cisco Events app. If you haven't done that yet, that is your portal. That is your key to getting all of the information that you need and getting exactly where you need to go. So check that out as things change, shift. If you need to sign up for sessions, you're going to do all of that on the Cisco Events app. So make sure that you make that happen as well. All right, so if we start this conversation on cloud, it's a really, really rich world. There's so many benefits to taking advantage of cloud. Now, what Rowan talked about in the keynote yesterday morning is that as that cloud exposure becomes greater, so does the surface of potential threat to the industry. So doing cloud right is a big part of having that conversation about cloud in the first place. We've got a lot of different great cloud solutions here at Cisco, of course, and we encourage you to take advantage of those. But the idea is, don't let the fear of cloud stand in the way of taking advantage of the benefits of cloud. We can bring together all those capabilities on the networking side, security, analytics, management, work across your multi-cloud environment to help you simplify, secure, really optimize the way that you work. This is again on the private cloud side, on the managed solution side, uh, the hybrid and public cloud solutions side, and this approaches a lot of different capabilities that we offer here at Cisco. So it's not just working within digitization, sending applications to the cloud, deriving benefit from the cloud, it touches on a number of our other solutions and products as well, application management, uh, for example, if we look at business performance, at uh, actionable intelligence, whether you're looking for better protection for your firm, whether it is about uh, securing connections within the organization, securing cloud access, evolving your infrastructure toward the digital reality that we just talked about a moment ago with Didi Dasgupta. All of these are benefits of moving toward cloud, and again, we're going to be tackling a lot of that in the upcoming innovation showcase. All right, so if I dive in and I take a look at what is coming up next year in our schedule, are we going to video here at this point? I'm not quite sure what is coming up on this point. All right, great. So we're going to go to our next video here. We do have Kip uh, uh, in that video. We're just going to throw directly to it because my notes aren't uh, right where I need them to be, but the video is going to speak for itself. Let's toss out to that VT right now. Hi, I'm here with Kip and Bob. We're going to talk about the Google Cisco partnership, how Google Cloud is working with Cisco and vice versa. Kip, tell us a little bit more about this partnership. Yeah, sure. You know, we announced it in October, and the feedback has been tremendous. And basically, we announced what we think is the industry's first open hybrid cloud solution. Um, and this is a solution that uses open source technologies um, like Kubernetes and Istio uh, to deliver a seamless on premise and in the cloud with Google Cloud uh, solution for customers. 
And we think it's really important because it's an open solution, it's really a multi-cloud solution. Mm -hmm. um, we're, opt we're working closely with Google Cloud to optimize it for Google Cloud, but it'll also work uh, in other clouds. And it takes advantage of lots of Cisco technologies, including the Cisco Container Platform that we just announced this morning, and our Hyper HyperFlex Platform that we announced last week. Fantastic, so I love to hear that, that on-premises, uh, cloud, people don't have to have separate skill sets necessarily to manage everything. Bob, what is your thought about how Google Cloud can really help the enterprise customers then? Yeah, so Google uh, and Cisco have actually been enterprise partners for a very long time. Uh, Cisco is actually our first enterprise customer, uh, or I'm sorry, partner, um, a while ago. Um, so I think we see the role kind of the same way, is we want you to be able to develop in the cloud or on-prem, run workloads wherever they need to run, particularly in, in Europe, there's a lot of regulations that are really important. So having a partner like Cisco brings the enterprise the best of both worlds. They can get access to Google technology and our, in, um, our innovation, as well as sticking with Cisco, who's going to always give you a secure, reliable infrastructure um, that we're actually co-engineering together. Uh, our engineers work really closely with Kip's team. We actually give Cisco the same flags for Kubernetes that we use in our own managed service. So we're working really closely together. The customer demand has been really good. Um, and we're really just really excited. It's a, you know, it's a path to the cloud, which you never actually have to take if you don't want to. So we're really excited about the partnership. I love that. It's not just about here, the some APIs, go work with them. Your engineers are actually working closely together to make sure everything is seamless. Yep. What can we look forward to in the future? Well, you know, the big thing is uh, the solution availability, which is scheduled for late, later this year. Um, and we took a big milestone uh, on that with the CCP announcement this morning, uh, and that's available in April. Um, so customers are already starting to look at what kinds of things they need to put in place to take advantage of this solution. Um, and then really, um, you know, following the progress of some of the open source technologies uh, like Kubernetes and Istio, which would be part of the solution, I think is something that, that people can do as well. Fantastic. Bob, anything to add? Yeah, I'd just say it's a really cool partnership where we get to keep doing what we do on open source and work with a great partner like Cisco who handles support for the customer. The customer gets to keep you know, a lot of things the same. So customers really tend to like it because it's, it's, uh, it's safe and reliable and I think, like Kip said, you know, it's something we're working on really hard together. Can't wait for it to come out this year. All right, thank you so much, guys. Uh, you know, there it is. It's hybrid cloud, it's multi-cloud, it's uh, openness, the, uh, the embracement of containers and such. So thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to hearing more about the Google Cisco partnership. All right, thank you so much, Lauren, and our thanks to Google as well. Uh, great setup in that video as we move into this entire segment about discussing cloud strategies, how to take the best advantage of cloud, and how you do it uh, with Cisco in partnership, because we are very proud of our ability to, uh, to help organizations get where they need to be and really embrace uh, the multi-cloud future. So to continue on that line, I'm going to turn my head slightly to the left. My buddy Rob Boyd has joined me here in the studio. Look Hi, who showed Bob. up! I missed you! We never get a chance uh, yeah. to talk with each other anymore. No, you don't call, you don't write, you don't bring snacks, I don't know. I see you on camera, pre-recorded live, I can't tell the difference, <laughs> uh, but you're always somewhere out there. Um, no, we're having fun, but there's a lot to cover here. There is so much to cover, and you've been running around like mad. You've been with the remote crew out, uh, tackling a number of different areas. Yeah. We're actually, in just a moment, we're going to throw to a video uh, that you were able uh, to record yesterday about the cloud strategy. But before we get to that, just yeah. tell me a little bit about what you've seen here on the show floor in terms of the cloud conversation, okay. beginning with the kickoff yesterday at the keynote, and what you're thinking about it right now. Well, here's the thing. I think there's a mind shift that, that Maybe it's only me, but I think, I'm going to say it's the industry, so I feel like I'm part of that crowd, but, this, but it was me coming around to the fact, let's say, that cloud is not an either-or decision, that you go, hey, I'm all about private cloud, doing my own data center thing, or I'm all public cloud. It's not bifurcated like that. The reality is, and this is what Cisco has doubled down on, you're seeing examples of, of this across every architecture as part of our multi-cloud strategy, but it's the fact that I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I need private cloud for certain things, certain applications, and I'm seeing benefits of, of, uh, of uh, public cloud, but I may need Google for this, I may need Azure for this with Microsoft, uh, I may need AWS. And so we're operating as kind of a Switzerland, if you will, and that's kind of, we're not saying we force you to go do either or things. The fact is, is that everything is always a migration and people dip their toe in the water, they use a little bit of cloud. At the same time, they need the same instrumentation across the board to say, well, I can't measure things differently depending on who I'm working with. I need my data, to is it operating the way I expect? 
and can I do that at a glance and not have to calculate to determine what happened last week? So we have the benefit of staying agnostic, but how much of this is application-based? As the application comes online and creates demand, does that determine the use of the cloud to make best use of the application? It does, it does absolutely, because applications natively, the way they've been built are very monolithic. They're not designed for the level of flexibility and agility that we're now coming to expect um, and that, uh, that, that is coming out of this notion of using the cloud. Because the idea of the cloud is you're not now geographically dependent. You can use geography to your advantage, be it to put data closer to the users, uh, to uh, do things uh, in a more cost-effective manner, to scale on demand, whatever it may be, whatever your reason is, um, now we're finding that applications may benefit from being built differently. And that's part of our Google relationship. So Google has operated you know, in this 100% cloud uh, mentality from the get-go, they built Kubernetes, which allowed and had been living in this container environment. They open sourced Kubernetes as an orchestration platform mm. to say containers are great in and of themselves. They are literally cloud native, but they still need more things uh, from the perspective of how do we actually work with them but then they still need more infrastructure, and this is where Cisco comes in in our partnership with Google, what we're doing with the container platform, what we're doing with Hyperplex, yeah. and what that's been announced, all that starts to come together to make it very easy to build an application, as you say, and use it anywhere you need. This is so exciting, and I think that's actually a perfect lead into the video that you recorded yesterday, okay. which is specifically dedicated to the Cisco cloud strategy. That's what you were touching yes. on right now. Let's hear a little bit more about it. Let's roll that VT. All right, welcome to Cisco TV Studios. My name is Rob Boyd and it is my pleasure to be joined by Fabio and Gordon. You guys are all about cloud. Cloud is such a central theme to everything we're talking about here, probably more so, and that's not a new theme for us, but um, probably more so we've got more to brag about, more things, our strategy I think has never been more clear, but I think it's important we all understand how to speak to it. What's important, if I'm a customer, how do I, what do I take away from it? If I'm a partner, how do I work with you on it? And if I'm a customer, how do I consume it? Uh, so Fabio, I'm going to start with you, if you could set the stage. We are speaking more than just cloud, we speak specifically to a reality of multi-cloud. Yeah. Can you explain what we mean by multi-cloud and how that applies? Yeah, I mean, let's talk about, and Rob, thank, first of all, thank you for having yeah. us, right? No, it's a pleasure. Um, First thing first, where is this coming from? It comes from the need of the business to digitize everything they do, right? Any process in, in, in any line of business, in any unit of the, uh, the companies. Uh, what does this matter in the end? Um, and how does it translate into reality? Is new applications and more and more applications faster and faster, okay? Yeah. To beat your competitor out there in the marketplace. That's fundamentally what it is. Now, more application faster means getting access to innovation wherever it comes from. Any provider, any cloud. And that's why companies end up having a multi-cloud strategy because no one cloud has it all. Right. And so what you see right now is that 94% of the companies that are fundamentally um, embracing cloud as a key uh, platform to accomplish their digital transformation are using multiple clouds. And that translates into a lot of developers fundamentally in this line of business that are getting access to it. And of course IT ops that find themselves into facing a rising complexity. Gotcha, so Gordon, I'm curious from your perspective, um, you represent kind of the European voice, is yeah. that correct? And so, yeah. with, with how he is defining this, does that translate to what you're seeing with customers in the European market? Absolutely, I mean, what we see with customers over the, the last five years has seen phenomenal growth in terms of the cloud adoption. But at the same time as that phenomenal growth, we've also run into this complexity problem, right? Um, we lack control, uh, you know, we, have, we lack visibility, it's very fragmented as customers build up you know, this desire to have applications wherever they may sit. And fundamentally then, we're talking to our customers about how they bring an element of control, consistency, and structure to that. And we're looking at it in really four key areas. We're looking at it in the network. You know, how do we extend the capabilities of the present day networks out to the cloud? Um, how do we make sure it's secure? So how do we extend our security capabilities out to the cloud, right. whatever that cloud may be? And now we're also starting to look at how we get better visibility of what's going on. And then we're also looking at how we manage it and orchestrate it better than we've ever done before. So we're really focused on speaking to customers about building up these four pillars to drive consistency in terms of how you knock away the complexity, get the agility, but at the same time get levels of control that they haven't had before. So really excited time for us just now. How are we doing it? We're doing it because of software. We're yeah. embedding software into everything we do. 
in a way that we've never done before, which is giving us this flexibility. Well, let's get more specific on that, because I think one of the things that struck me is when we talk to customers, we find out that um, uh, a technical leadership at our customers, as, as we got past the hype of clouds that's been going on for quite some time, we realized that it's not about simply um, uh, putting it on the cloud and forgetting about it, there's still the same things have to happen, the same care about still exist. Um, as Gordon mentioned, what are tools are we doing to address simplification? How are we, we've made a lot of acquisitions, we've had a lot of internal development. Are we bringing these things together to simplify and give CIOs, for instance, more of what they need? Absolutely, if you think about it, you know, Cisco has uh, uh, quite a lot of business units and fundamentally in the last 18, 24 months, every single Cisco business unit has seen the same multi-cloud world happening. Yeah. And so, uh, through organic and inorganic read acquisitions, uh, kind of investments, uh, we've been pulling together an unbelievable uh, amount of assets and, uh, and intelligence across the four pillars that um, Gordon was talking about. Now, this is fundamentally our product uh, pillar, if you want. Now, how do you make that more um, easy to consume and palatable yeah. for customers? There are two additional legs. The first one is, you take these four pillars, networking, security, management, and analytics, and you build easier to consume proposition. Okay. This is what we came up uh, fundamentally in October with the Cisco a multi-cloud portfolio, which is pretty simply articulated across these four dimensions. Connect, protect, consume, and advisory. Like as simple it. as that. Okay. And that's the second pillar. The third pillar is you take all of this and you embed it into solutions that we build together with the cloud providers, such as what we announced with Cisco and Google at the end of October with our open hybrid cloud, which fundamentally gives customers the confidence that both the public cloud provider and Cisco can actually build this consistent environment between the two sites. How important is the teaming in Europe? With We talk about working with Google, we've been working with AWS, working with Microsoft, um, but how important is that to how we execute from your perspective? Massively, because the big word here is consistency. We yeah. need to be able to offer customers the flexibility to choose any cloud, any application, any infrastructure, but we need to be able to deliver it in a consistent way. Yeah. Critical in EMEA for that consistency is our ability to be more transparent with what's going on, and that allows us to deliver better governance, better audit, audit capability in EMEA. And you can imagine in EMEA, those things are right at the center of the care abouts for the CIO today. So, you know, we're really delivering a great platform opportunity here for our customers to get that level of consistency, which will give them better governance and, and better control. Well, not to get too technical on this, but just wanted to say, I, one of the most interesting things that among the multiple things that came out, we announced HyperFlex 3 recently, um, which is playing a big part in helping customers execute on these things. We, of course, have the Google partnership and Kubernetes and such that we've been uh, working on because customers seem to be adopting that. But specifically, I think it was um, uh, a stretch clustering, and the ability to do that is really an EMEA um, uh, want and a care about that said there was a lot of companies. We used to think about um, HyperFlex or hyperconvergence as being something only uh, certain smaller customers wanted and we were afraid because we came out conservative for a change, which I'm proud of us for, saying don't put the most critical stuff on this, but now we came out where customers are telling us it can handle critical workloads and so now we're rolling out features that say the biggest uh, operations with multiple private data centers, if you will, with stretch clusters can actually take advantage of and then now we're building applications uh, working with Google such that being native to cloud is, is native to how we do business and I really like how we're moving in that. Yep. No, we got more coming this week. I'm sorry, I'm practicing as I rattle off the stuff <laughs> I'm excited about. No, but you were doing great. Oh, That's thank why you. You know, we didn't yeah. tell you anything. Yeah, because these, well. these are the guys that I have to make sure are happy with how I say it. But um, <laughs> any final point, and then I'll come to you. But um, I'll start with you, Gordon. Sorry. Yeah, so, uh, well, for me, I think it's all about the consistency and the control. Those two C's are very, very important for us. And if we put better consistency and control in place, it actually gives us better flexibility for our customers. And that solves the complexity, the third C, that we had earlier on. So consistency and control is solving the complexity challenges for our customers in the multi-cloud world. It's hard to create tension in these conversations, so would you disagree with consistency and control? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, and the question okay. is, uh, what do other big market players uh, think about this multi-cloud strategy? Well, let me tell you something. If you come to Barcelona, you're here, and you come visiting us uh, in the cloud area, in the world of solution, you will find uh, AWS, Google Cloud. They're all here. And Azure and they're all here, they're all with us. We're working very, very closely with these guys because they're absolutely the protagonists of this era, of yeah. multi-cloud era. They're pushing the envelope of innovation for our customers and they understand the value that Cisco can take to actually glue up this environment together. Fundamentally, 
lower the barrier to uh, to access the cloud and to confidently kind of develop in the cloud and develop uh, and, and um, in the cloud, but also deploy anywhere the customer want and removing all these barriers. So, so glad you brought them in because I think every one of, each one, it's not as if customers pick one and say this is who I'm partnering with. Each one brings a different level of expertise in a slightly different area because they're, they're carving out their own pieces of what we kind of loosely call public cloud, but it's yeah. so much more than that, whether it be machine learning um, or uh, some of the ways in which you can deploy differently. Uh, each person is, a, is an expert in their own right, and, um, and the way we connect them and make it simple so that we can get the instrumentation consistent across, no matter who you go with, That's I it. love that role we're playing. That's so it. guys, thank you so much for joining me. No guys, if you have a chance, if you're on the show floor, be sure and stop by the cloud booth. As he said, there's a lot of good people to meet there and you can ask a lot of hard questions because all the players are there. So we get the ability to answer all that for you and that's the way it should be. So thanks for joining us, thank you guys. We'll see you on the next one. All right, welcome back into the studio, Rob. Fantastic interview, what a great overview of the strategy. Um, what really stood out to you, if you think back on that? Well, it's really, and I kind of teased into this at the beginning, so it, and I haven't changed from this, it's the fact that, so one, you're going to speak some level of cloud speak, if you will, at every, almost everything in here. Um, and we're in a unique position from a Cisco perspective to say that we don't, we partner with everybody that we need to partner with, but our advantage is the fact that we're really about the data and helping you get the data to where it needs to be and giving you one way in which you can access all of this to run your business versus being run by your platforms. Really interesting, yeah, and it, 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 what it does is it empowers people uh, to take advantage of the application. I want to go, we've got another video, Lauren Malhoyt um, is going to give us a, a demo on cloud container, which is an aspect of what you talked about yes. in that last piece. Let's go ahead right to Lauren at this point. Hi everyone, I'm here at the Cisco Container Platform booth with Pranesh, the PM for uh, Cisco CP. Pranesh, what is Cisco Container Platform? Uh, Cisco Container Platform is a container management platform based on 100% upstream open source components. It has things like Kubernetes, Docker, it's 100% hybrid cloud optimized, and it addresses important customer challenges with integrations like networking, security, storage, and it has a very flexible deployment model. Yeah, making it easy for the customer, which exactly. I'm sure is appreciated. Yes. Can we see it? Of course, we have a demo running right here. So what I'm going to show in this demo is three use cases. Perfect. So here it goes. So the first and foremost thing, now we are deploying the platform. The deployment of the platform is very easy. I deployed it in 20 minutes and I'm a PM. Um, <laughs> so anybody can do it. It's a very lightweight platform which runs on three VMs. So right now we are deploying what we call as OVA mm -hmm. into a vCenter. I'm sure, yeah, admins have done that uh, for a long time now, so pretty easy. Yes. yes. And once it's deployed, this is the UI you will see with Cisco Container Platform. You log in, and then the next step is you try to deploy the Kubernetes cluster so that you can deploy containerized applications on top of that. So we can orchestrate the containers and all yes, of that good exactly. stuff. Yes, exactly. The beauty of Kubernetes with Docker Engine, Nginx, there are a lot of open source components there, even for logging monitoring. We have Prometheus, EFK, all that good stuff. So here, you log into the tool, you see first dashboard where we show you different clusters, and then there is a simple button, you click create cluster, that opens up a wizard. Few steps, uh, you specify the inputs, and then your cluster is up and running. So some other worker master details, this is a Kubernetes cluster, you know, master slave concepts in Kubernetes cluster, you specify the details, in the end we show the summary, do the pre-checks, and then once you hit that finish button, it starts deploying that Kubernetes cluster by talking with vCenter. So easy, just follow the wizard, no need to know yeah. the, the kubectl commands and all of that. Yes. And as you can see, once the cluster is deployed, we show you the state of cluster. You see that small green checkbox there that shows you that cluster is healthy. In worst possible case, if there are problems with the cluster, you'll see that the cluster is in problem. You'll see orange or red, and that's how you'll know you need to troubleshoot that specific cluster. Uh, these are a few actions you can also perform with the cluster, where you can change the size of the cluster. Initially, say you created a cluster with 15 nodes, and your workloads grew, and now you want a 20 node cluster. Click a button, change the size of the cluster from 15 nodes to 20, and we scale the cluster. And that's what containers are all about, really, is being able to scale in, yeah, scale out. Exactly. And now, what what we are doing in the demo is just showing you the state of uh, cluster with kubectl commands. Hey, we deployed it here, right here. It's uh, running healthy. And then we are applying the sock shop application, which is basically a sock 
SOX store that runs on the web. So once the application is deployed, you'll see it in a, in a browser running. And you see it, we renamed it to Cisco SOX, so nice sock, pair of SOX. There is a load <laughs> balancing there. This is multi-services based cloud native application. SOX are very popular right now, so we need to be able to scale yeah, out. Yeah, it's cold out here. <laughs> you need SOX. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third use case where we will be showing the data persistency. And for that, we are using kind of a tweet-based application where you log in and send your tweets and that application will store your tweets. So this is just a YAML file, you know, cloud-native containerized applications are deployed in the YAML files. So we are just showing here there is a persistent volume we are creating with the application. And that will basically make sure that your data is stored even when application is scaled, is upgraded or downgraded. So that, that constant question of containers and persistent storage, how we, how yes, we manage yes, that? Exactly. So just kubectl get part, see our application is up. This is first version of the application that's being deployed. And you can see this is pretty simple application with the Twitter timeline here. You log into the application, you know, standard things, username, password, you log into the application. And then you start typing whatever tweets you want to send. And those tweets get saved as data in the application. So just for an example, we saved a couple of tweets on the timeline. And now what we will do, we will upgrade the application to a newer version and ideally the data needs to persist. And that's the big challenge our customers are facing right now. That it's very hard to get data to persist between different versions of application. All right, so kubectl apply, that basically deploys the next version of your application. We are just making sure with get parts, the application is up. You go to the same URL again, the new version of the application is deployed. And as you can see, the, the data is still there even when application is upgraded. That's basically All the very tweets small were example saved. of the data <laughs> persistency. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Pradnesh. I'm so happy to see Cisco uh, embracing containers. I, I think this is the, the way of the future. I think a lot of people think that. So uh, thank you again, and uh, thanks for watching. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, as always, really fantastic job. Great interview there, embracing containers. So Rob, uh, how does that tie into what your conversations were looking like yesterday? Well, so Lauren and I were doing some pre-research on containers and kind of understanding, because so containers are considered an, an open source thing. They're not, anybody can take advantage of containers, they're light, they're easy to deploy, anybody can play with them, which is one reason why they're such a boon, uh, it's been such a benefit to software developers, because it becomes very easy, it's a completely uh, a constrained environment that's not as heavy, they're lightweight, as we mentioned earlier, they are native to cloud, and then you get the orchestration platform, which is also open source. You have Docker containers being, which have become the the most prominent, uh, dominant form of container, and then the most dominant uh, container um, orchestration platform has become Kubernetes. Now these are both open source, so the first question I had when talking to this team was like, we're coming out with this uh, container platform on Hyperflex, I uh, can't remember exactly how we word that, so pardon me for it, but <laughs> the thing is, is I understand Hyperflex value, um, what are we doing different with containers? Why does someone get it from us if they can get it for free sure. from somewhere else? And the difference becomes that you, Kubernetes, bless them, uh, you know, it's not that simple to use. And when it comes to scaling and it comes to how do you tie in storage and all the other things that applications are truly going to need, there's a little bit more. And to simplify them, make them really useful for a massive amount of people and enterprise, this is what the platform brings on Hyperflex. It brings that same Hyperflex simplicity, makes OVA deployment simple and uh, now people, more people can take advantage of that magic of containers. Really cool, and I'm so glad that you and Lauren were able to have those conversations yesterday. We're going to stop talking about cloud here in the studio, but we are going to continue with cloud and the innovation showcase. We are just seconds away, enabling a multi-cloud world. Liz Santoni and Kip Compton are going to talk about Cisco's cloud strategy, uh, how Cisco and our partners are helping customers address complexities across the multi-cloud environment, really picking up where we left off here with those videos. Let's go ahead and go live down to the CMAX Theater at the end of World of Solutions for the next Innovation Showcase talk. We'll see you on the other side.